everyone. Just want to wish you all the luck in the world for tomorrow's chemistry exam. And I want to share some last minute tips. So obviously organic chemistry is going to be a big part of this. And that includes carboxylic acids, alcohols and esters. So just make sure you're happy during the displayed and structural formula of these various homologous series. Remember in terms of naming the ester, the first part of the name comes from the alcohol, the second part comes from the carboxylic acid. So for example, if you have methanol, an alcohol reacting with ethanoic acid, the name of the ester will be methyl ethanoate and you'll produce water as a byproduct and it's that presence of that water molecule which means that this is a condensation reaction. It involves the loss of a water molecule. It's also a reversible reaction and you will need to potentially specify that you need a sulfuric acid catalyst. Remember you also need to look over the manufacture of alcohols so that means looking at both the fermentation and hydration of ethene methods. Make sure you know the various advantages and disadvantages of each. So fermentation has the advantage of using renewable glucose in its production, but the rate of reaction is much lower. It's a batch process, etc., etc. With the hydration of ethene, you'll need a phosphoric acid catalyst. It's a continuous process, but that also means you need high temperatures and pressures. It also uses ethene, which comes from crude oil. So that's a non-renewable resource. So like I said, it's quite a chatty part of the specification. Don't forget to look over the oxidation of alcohols. Remember, alcohols will produce carboxylic acid when oxidized. You might need to talk about microbial oxidation or potassium dichromate six. Make sure you've looked over those notes. So yeah. I'm hoping that they're going to test you on a wide variety of things that you've learned in terms of not just picking teeny tiny annoying bits of the specification. Do look over equilibria. Make sure you're happy with the effect of temperature and pressure on the position of equilibrium and understand how that's going to affect your yield of either your reactant or product. I've got lots of videos on YouTube that can help you with that. But yeah, stay calm. You are so nearly there with this. If the first exam didn't go as well as you hoped, not to worry. You can absolutely pick up lots and lots of marks. Chemistry is really precise though, so do make sure you're using that periodic table carefully, converting your units appropriately if they're asking about more calculations. Do look over the methodology involved in carrying out a titration. So where are the pitfalls? Make sure you're adding you know, an acid dropwise towards the end. You only need a few drops of indicator. You'll want a white tile to look at the color change swell that flask continuously. Anyway, I'm all out of ideas, but please, please, please let me know how you get on. I'll post a video shortly after your exam tomorrow. Best of luck.